Hmm. Very interesting, flashy things out here tonight. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. You know, folks, I've never seen the devil move quite the way he does in a narcissistic workplace environment. You know, never in my life. And, you know, the thing is, is that these people thrive on weaknesses in people. And they thrive because, you know, we give ourselves up, so to speak. You know, there may be some issues or some, you know, psychological things or impairments or something that many of us have to work on in these workplaces. You know, and so we get around these narcissistic bosses, these master planners, these people who literally have worked all of their lives to secure some power line so they can, you know, micromanage your life and browbeat you to death for eight hours or whatever you're working. And that's why it's very troublesome. It's troublesome because it's something that many people in this world have to endure because they have to work. A lot of people weren't born with silver spoons and, you know, they have to go out here in the world and they have to work for someone and, you know, and deal with these, these games, these sick, twisted, narcissistic games, you know, that stress many people out, right? Have driven many people to suicide on many occasions. You know, this is bad. And if you people don't want to focus on the real problem, which is if it's you, if it's you, yourselves, you're the people who need to look in the mirror and take a good gander at the product of this function that you came from. And, you know, when it's really interesting how, you know, this type of sickness is generational, you know. And so if you withhold love or support or the finer things that create great people and great, you know, characters. If you if you withhold just a, a small fraction of these things. The product, the end result may be something that you just don't want to reckon with. So, yeah, the world is full of nutballs and whack jobs and all of the people who want to do you in and and these people exist and they're real you know they're, they're real and a lot of you really don't acknowledge that yeah you discuss it when you know you see some news bit or some news feed about something that just happened some local tragedy or some major incident yeah you discuss it but it's only you know, it's trivial. It doesn't mean anything to your life, right? You don't care about bad people. You don't care about people who need help, right? Now, you know, you have to understand, people, that there are dysfunctional people who have a poor outer shell but their inner shells are, are hollow and, and in some cases just shattered and broken. And they can't be repaired, you know. Some of these people on the outside are beautiful, drop dead gorgeous women, right? The most handsome masculine men or something. You may see these folks. But really on the inside, there's some issues. We see this in many cases, not all the time, but we see it. And not until there's some dysfunctional moment or someone's affected do we go, wow, I never saw that coming. I'm trying to get you people to see something that's coming. 
The bridge is out up ahead. Don't you see it? Are you looking? Are you listening? And I do these talks for you folks because really I'm speaking to the people who understand, who understand why this is important. And I suspect a few people who disagree with my viewpoints, I, I suspect those people are around too. And that's their and and that's that uh duality that I always get into, right? You know? See the problem with the duality thing as far as mortals go, right? The problem with that is when you people have too much of something on one side that affects another person, that causes another person pain and misery. See, that's that's where I'm going with this, right? You know how you feel for yourselves, but what about other people? How do they feel? Do you understand when you take them through stress and anguish because you have control or you have some type of, you know, ranking on some hierarchy somewhere on a job in, at, a, at a workplace or something. And there's someone who's going through something who may have, you know, left their home having a bitter argument with a spouse or a child may have gotten sick or something. And there are things going on in people's lives that they just don't have time or need to be dealing with dysfunctional narcissism in the workplace. It's bad enough they have to be there at a job. But you guys, you guys are special because, you know, you really make it, you know, great for them, right? They, they, they really enjoy their days when you're there. So what I, what I propose and what I've always proposed is this grand rocket ship theory, right? You know, we trick you some type of way because you're just narcissists, you're stupid, you know, and all we have to do is just play sheep for a minute and you'll you'll fall you'll fall right into that and we just lead you into that rocket ship and then we just ship your ass off you know problem is like i said you know i wouldn't do that to space i wouldn't do that to anywhere you people are just i don't know where you should be in another dimension i don't know but not here Right. Because the people here, they have a lot to work on. Yeah. You know, a lot. But. They just don't need things in their life that complicates the process of them developing on a spiritual level or something better for themselves. So they in turn can treat other people better and that person in turn can do another person good and you get where I'm going with it. It's infectious, just as infectious as a bad deed or bad energy, right? People gravitate to a fight. People gravitate to negative energy. People gravitate to slander and whatever else, anything that's harming another person. And that's the energy. And if you yourselves have not looked in the mirror and said, you know, because maybe you enjoy pain, right? Maybe you enjoy that, right? But I'm here to tell you, you know, that if you haven't looked in that mirror and you haven't tried to reckon with yourself about, you know, why you want to be a better person, not because you want to be butterflies and you know, and fruit punch and kumbaya and all this good stuff. Not necessarily that. And those are good things, by the way. Because only the dysfunctional person would speak in such a way that they didn't believe that, you know, everyone staying in peace is a good thing. Because everyone keeping the peace is a good thing. In any, in any scenario, in any way it plays out. You know. So... I want you folks just to do that, you know, take your time to really look into yourselves, you know, because I talk about this a lot and I'm going to keep pushing that point home, looking into yourselves because you can be a better person. And then, you know, maybe the next person, they can learn something, right? Because a lot of people are dumb, so it works like that. 
It's getting cold anyway. I love bad behavior, folks. Don't love dummies. Don't love dysfunction. Don't love negative workspaces. You people, get a life.